Hey, John R. here, and this is another video post. This topic, four ways to use two truths and a lie in any math class. Maybe you're first introduced to the two truths and a lie game like I was. I was at a small professional development day in my district where I had to stand up and introduce, introduce myself. I had to say two true statements and one statement that was a lie. The audience had to decide which was the lie and which were true. Here are my three statements. I am related to Bobby Orr. My first teaching job was in the Caribbean. I have three children, two of which are twins. Can you guess which the lie is? It's kind of awkward, but kind of fun at the same time. Can you imagine how this activity can be used in math class? Here are four quick ways to use two truths and a lie in any math class. First, weekly warm-ups. I start each day off with a math warm-up from the Start of Math Bite resources. The type of warm-up changes depending on the day of the week, but what doesn't change is that they are all about starting discussion in my math class. Two truths and a lie is great for setting a low floor to the start of class. Here is what you can do. I show a picture like this one from mathbeforebed.com, which already includes three statements. Students have to determine which are true and which is the lie. Can you determine which is the lie? Usually prompts like this start great math discussions in my class. But when those deep, rich discussions actually happen is when I give the image without statements and ask them to create their own statements. Two true and one a lie. You'll be amazed at what those brains can come up with. Determine two true statements and one lie for this image. One student may say, I see more than nine squares. Another might jump in to disagree with them right off the bat. And then the first student has to defend their thinking. An instant share your thinking moment. Structurally, students can either share their statements out loud for a full class discussion, or you can have students record their statements on paper or in their favorite digital tool like Google Classroom or Pear Deck, or those are just a few. That way you can ensure all students' voices get heard. Number two, gallery walks. If you show, let's say, an image with the three statements uh, or a math item like a graph, an equation, or a diagram, and have students make their own true truths in a lie, they can display their statements around the room like in a gallery walk. The class can now visit from station to station and decide which statements are true and which is the lie. Consider the option of having students create their own math item and also create statements to go with it. Now around the room you have this great number of math problems and statements to match and all your students created every bit of it. Watch those discussions just naturally happen. Here are some pictures of my senior math students participating in that gallery walk. Number three, scavenger hunts. Post around the room many images and prompts and have one statement on each one either a true or a lie. Your students are to visit the prompts one by one and determine which are trues and which are the lies. To put more of a mystery in it, your instructions can say, find five trues and five lies. Have your students record them and use reasoning to say which is true and which is the lie. The fourth, guess who? Play around in the guess who game, two truths and a lie edition. A student will stay, stand up and say out loud two true statements and one lie about a mystery number. The student will let the class know which are true and which is the lie. The class has to try and guess what that mystery number is. The class has to think critically about the characteristics revealed in order to determine that mystery number correctly. As an example, a student may stand up and say out loud, one true statement about my mystery number is that it's bigger than 10. Another true statement about my mystery number is that it's odd. And the lie about my mystery number is that it is not prime. Can you guess the mystery number? Of course, you can play this game with many topics other than numbers. You can play with fractions, decimals, percent, two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes, measurement concepts, equations, and functions. Now, you don't have to use all four strategies all the time. Choose your favorite or mix them up. Are you already using two truths and a lie? Do you have a different way of using it? Because I would love to hear it. I'm always looking for ways to make my students defend and argue and discuss mathematics and any new ideas I can bring into the class to shake that up would be awesome. So share them in the comments below and I'll read every single one. You can download the Two Truths and a Lie quick reference guide below. You can print it out or share it. It's a handy resource to look at to remind you about the four different ways you can use it. If you like this video, share it with your friends or your other teachers. Maybe it'll land in the lap of a teacher who's really looking for these great resources and they can use it in their classes to spark these discussions. Thanks.